In lesson 2.2, students see five clear colorless liquids that look very, very similar to one another. Water, salt water, alcohol, a detergent solution, and an unknown. And you tell students that the unknown is one of the four known solutions. The idea is that they will test the liquids on wax paper and on construction paper. The main idea is that since these liquids are made of different molecules, they'll act differently on the different surfaces, and that students can use the characteristic properties of the way the liquids interact with the surface to figure out what the unknown is. So let's watch students put the liquids on the wax paper, and you can see W for water, SW for salt water, and there's alcohol and detergent solution and an unknown. And if you look closely, you can see that the water, salt water, and the unknown all beat up on the wax paper. They look similar, but the alcohol and the detergent are somewhat flatter. So students already can use the wax paper test as a way to eliminate alcohol and detergent as probably not the unknown. So students can then go on to the construction paper to see what the unknown might be. So here, students just use the water and the salt water because they look most similar to the unknown. So they're going to put water, salt water, and the unknown on a piece of pink construction paper. And if you notice, the way that the water and the unknown absorb into the construction paper is different than the way the salt water does. The salt water just sort of stands up there and doesn't absorb much. So now, using the two tests, the wax paper test and the construction paper test, kids can conclude that the unknown must be water. So we want kids to think about why this happened on the molecular level. So let's take a look at this animation. So the animation shows the dropping of the different liquids on the wax paper, and you can see that water, the unknown, and salt water all beat it up, whereas the isopropyl alcohol and the detergent spread out. And then if we use the water and the unknown on a piece of construction paper, they absorb into the construction paper in the similar way, whereas the salt water stays up. But why? So we tried to show that each substance is made up of its own molecules. You have water is water molecules, salt water is the ions of salt mixed in with the water. Obviously, isopropyl alcohol is alcohol molecules and detergent has detergent molecules. And since all these are different, they act differently on the surfaces on which they're tested. So in the end, the unknown and the water both acted the same way on both surfaces. Therefore, kids can conclude that of the all the possible liquids they tested, the unknown is most likely water. There's another test students can do to compare, for instance, water and salt water. Students can put just a dot of food coloring on these basket style coffee filters. Right now, these coffee filters are actually on top of two cups. Now, this Q tip was dipped in water, and this Q tip was dipped in salt water. We're just going to see if there's any difference between the way water and salt water makes the color in this green food coloring move. Over time, the color spreads in the salt water and the water differently. If you look in the water, the yellow and blue of the food coloring move in kind of a similar way and continue to be green for most of the colored area. But for the salt water, it separates the colors much more effectively and you have yellow toward the center and blue on the outside. So the way that the water and salt water interact with the food coloring tells you that they're different. For the Next Generation Science Standards, Standard 5 PS11, develop a model to describe that matter is made of particles too small to be seen, and 5 PS13, make observations and measurements to identify materials based on their properties. This lesson supports these standards in that we look at liquids on the molecular level, we look down at the particles that the different solutions are made of, and we see that the fact that they're made of different molecules means that they interact with surfaces and with other liquids differently, and that we can identify an unknown or identify a liquid based on its properties. For the foundation boxes, science and engineering practices, developing and using models, students look at the molecular models of the liquids and use that 
as an explanation of why the liquids have different properties. For structure and properties of matter, this idea that matter can be subdivided into particles, we take a look at the particle level of the liquids, and you can use a variety of properties to identify a liquid. Here we use the way it stands up on wax paper or absorbs into construction paper, or the way it makes food coloring move on filter paper. And for cross-cutting concepts, scale, proportion, and quantity, natural objects exist from the very small to the immensely large. We look at matter on the molecular level, and this idea of cause and effect, that substances can be tested and unknowns can be identified based on the characteristic properties of the substances. So thanks for listening and watching, and good luck with the lesson.